Remarks of the President upon the swearing-in of the Presidential Cabinet by the Chief Justice of the United States. From the East Room of the White House, January 21, 1961. Mr. President, <clears throat> at your request, I have the very great honor to administer the oath of office to the following members of your Cabinet. Dean Rusk to be Secretary of State. Douglas Dillon, to be Secretary of the Treasury. Robert S. McNamara, to be Secretary of Defense. Robert F. Kennedy of Massachusetts, to be Attorney General. Edward F. Day of California, to be Postmaster General. Stuart Lee Udall of Arizona, to be Secretary of the Interior. Orville L. Freeman of Minnesota, to be Secretary of Agriculture. Luther H. Hodges of North Carolina to be Secretary of Commerce. Arthur J. Goldberg of Illinois to be Secretary of Labor. Abraham Ribicoff of Connecticut to be Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare. Adelaide E. Stevenson of Illinois to be the representative of the United States of America to the United Nations with the rank and status of Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary and the representative of the United States of America in the Security Council of the United Nations. Gentlemen, if you will raise your right hands, state your names, and repeat after me. I, I, I Freeman, will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, against all enemies foreign, and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, and I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge, that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office, the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. On which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Gentlemen, I congratulate you. I want to thank the Chief Justice for his help today and uh, for his good work. And I also want to congratulate and express my appreciation to the members of the Cabinet who have been sworn today. Quite obviously, whatever success we may achieve will depend in great part upon their dedication and their effort. And the success which they achieve will depend in good part upon the dedication and effort of the hundreds of thousands of men and women of this country who serve our national government. As a citizen, I think we're fortunate to have them all. As President of the United States, I find it heartening. And therefore, it is a great pleasure for me to welcome them as part of the official family. They are all patriotic men who are devoted to the welfare of this country and I'm confident that they will meet their responsibilities with high distinction. Thank you. Remarks of the President at the swearing-in of his junior cabinet, East Room of the White House, January 29, 1961. Uh, Mr. Justice, and uh, Mr. Vice President, I want to uh, welcome all of you to here to the, uh, this reception. The purpose was to complete the swearing in of those uh, members of the administration who had not had the oath administered to them, and also, and equally important, was our desire to have a chance to see these names we've been reading about in the uh, paper. One of the unsatisfactory features of a most satisfactory and interesting job has been the uh, 
fact that we have had a chance to see, and perhaps that will also be true in the future, comparatively few members of this administration. All of the uh, positions which are held by the men who are being sworn today and by those of you in the audience who have been sworn before are all extremely important. And the kind of uh, work that you do is vital to the success of this administration and vital to the success of our country. And therefore, we want, and the Vice President and I hold this view very strongly, the closest possible working relationship between all members of the administration and uh, the White House. So that I hope that this is the first of many uh, visits you pay here, and I hope that you will also, all of you, feel uh, not only a free, but also a responsibility to maintain the closest contact with each other and uh, with the Vice President and myself. And now, if the uh, busiest man in Washington would administer the oath of office. <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. President, in accordance with your request, uh, it is my very great honor to administer the oath of office to these officers of your administration. Byron R. White, Deputy Attorney General. H. William Brawley, Deputy Postmaster General. Thomas D. Morris of Maryland, Assistant Secretary of Defense. Paul H. Nitze, Assistant Secretary of Defense. Arthur Sylvester, Assistant Secretary of Defense. Joseph V. Cherick, Under Secretary of the Air Force. James Henry Wakelin, Jr., Assistant Secretary of the Navy. Lyle S. Garlock, Assistant Secretary of the Air Force. George Docking, member of the Export-Import Bank. Walter Heller, member of the Council of Economic Advisors. Kermit Gordon, member of the Council of Economic Advisors. James Tobin, member of the Council of Economic Advisors. Carmen Bellino, consultant to the President. Cyrus Roberts Vance, General Counsel, Department of Defense. Gentlemen, if you will raise your right hands, please. Pronounce your names and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic that I will bear, bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation or, purpose of or purpose of evasion, that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. Gentlemen, I congratulate each and every one of you and wish you Godspeed on your journey.